desktop for Worldwide Developer Conference. Uh, Lisa and Sean, I'm going to, as we go through some stuff, I'm going to talk about some links to pages. If you guys don't have to write them down, I'm going to post them on the website where the videos are. Who here wasn't here this morning? Charles? You Okay. So uh, then briefly, if you go to kenspencer.com and click on Classes, Sometime in the next couple days, I will have posted the recordings of today's classes there, and I will have a list of the links that we talk about in the class. So if we're going through and I mention something, say, Ken, where is that? And I'll say, Lisa, just write down kayak.com or whatever what it is so that I can go ahead and create links on the website in the section where the video is. So again, kenspencer.com, click on classes. And I record all my classes, so I'll probably be re repeating some of your questions to have it come up. Let me get the phone up here. <clears throat> Reflector. I'm trying regular internet. It was a bit temperamental earlier. We'll try this way and see if it works. So <clears throat> we talked about Siri. Um, you know, I think a lot of you are going to hopefully use Siri now. You'll see it's useful. It's like I told you. The investment in time you make learning to type manifested itself over time and probably to this day. The amount of time you invest in Siri and using and learning Siri will manifest itself over time. Angie, when Siri first came out, it didn't, it didn't like Angie at all. And now with the newer version of Siri, it's gotten much better and she's able to use it quite a bit and it's getting better all the time. And think about it this way, if you don't want to use it for any other reason, the more you use Siri, the better it's going to get for me because she will learn more. The way it's set up is it actually does learn as people do, do things. It's very, very smart in that regard. Your device doesn't learn, the big supercomputer learns. I think in the near future, we're going to also have Siri on board where it doesn't have to have an internet connection and maybe our Mac will start to have Siri too. We already have dictation on our Mac. So this afternoon, as I discussed earlier, is going to be more about, I've got some travel apps. I've got some photography apps because that ties in with travel. Uh, we're going to talk about things you can do, different websites, some deals. That's always my big thing about deals. I'll be getting a deal newsletter out that will be a subscription basis. It's completely free, but you have to subscribe to it because I don't want to spam you unless you want to be spammed. And... Uh, I'm going to briefly go over Evernote if I can in the end. If you're here to really learn about a lot about Evernote, I'm sorry, Pete is the Evernote pro, and I would do it complete injustice to, to do Evernote here, but I will talk about Dropbox. He'll probably be doing an Evernote class soon. And as always, the classes are 100% guaranteed. If you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't get what you wanted to get out of it, Lisa will be happy to give you a credit on that. But the Evernote thing, I just couldn't do it justice. I'll touch on it briefly, but there's some other things. Like we learned with notes and reminders this morning. It does well. I'm the deal guy. So I've got a deal. This is something that's kind of cool. I don't use a keyboard with my iPad, but if I were writing something long, I might. But there's a deal at Fry's right now. This is $20 off. It's a full-sized, 39 bucks, wireless, Bluetooth, so you don't have to plug in the little thing in the USB. Full-size keyboard. It controls iTunes and all that like the regular Apple keyboard. It's battery-operated, or you can use a USB cable if you want. And it's 39 bucks, and you can have three different devices hooked to it. You could have your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac, or two Macs and one iPad hooked to it. And you simply select one, two, or three Bluetooth to switch between them. Because the regular Apple, the regular Apple Bluetooth keyboard, you have to say pair with my iPad, and then pair it and pair it. Because otherwise, you're sitting here typing away on your computer, and it's going onto your iPad. So this, I think, is a pretty good deal. There's a hidden bonus I didn't know about. It comes with a little stand, an iPod, iPad, iPhone stand. It's by a company called Canix, and it's very. Uh, they make really good stuff, but. If I go here and here, it's a little adjustable stand that I can lean my iPad or my iPhone in. It folds up flat, almost like you could keep it in your pocket. 
iPad, different angles like that. So $39.99. I, again, like I say, I don't use it on I, I don't, because we talked about Siri, I don't use a keyboard very much anymore, but I think because I have a Mac Mini and I have my MacBook Pro, I'm going to use it so I can switch between the two quite easily on that. So, and it's a piece of tech gadgetry, so I had to buy it just so I could tell you guys about it. That's my rationalization. You guys need to find your own rationalization. Mine's used up. So, well, you can write it off. That's right. Yeah, it doesn't mean you don't have to pay for it. Everybody always thinks that's the case, right? Where do you get it? Dude? Fries. I'm sorry, it's on Fries till next Thursday. K A N E X. Canix. And they make some really great peripherals for Mac stuff. I mean, I'm really happy. They they just do nice work. I haven't tried the tactileness of the keyboard out. You're welcome to come up at the break or after the class. You could unwrap it and see if the keystrokes are what you like, but I like it. Fry's has a 30-day money-back, no questions asked guarantee, so if it turns out you don't like it or don't want to use it, fine. How much was it? $39.99. It's $20 below what it normally is, and I looked online, and I mean, that was what they're going for. It's just their, their Friday to Thursday sale is what it was. And you said it's made by Canix. Canix. K-A-N-E-X. Yeah. Let's show you on the ad really quick since we have a little internet here. Fries, fries.com, my home away from home. Uh, so if you click on fries.com, right up in here are the current ads. I used to have to go buy the B, and the only reason I would buy the B would be to get the Friday ads. Well, now they have them online, so I don't have to buy the B anymore. So the B should pay fries to have those. In this little uh, ad right here, Where'd it go? Oh, it's in this one right here, so Apple products. And if you scroll down here, there's some Apple accessories. There's the regular Apple keyboard, the wired one. But down here is Canix, right here. Multi-sync Bluetooth. But the cool thing is, is you can sync three different devices. Obviously, you just switch between the two, but it's a little button on them. Because that's really the hard thing is, oh, I'm on my iPad. Ah, crap, I gotta unplug, you know, repair my Bluetooth and everything else. They stay paired with it. But since we have dictation, we don't use keyboards as much as we used to, but it does have a 10 key on it if you're doing a little spreadsheets and stuff. Numbers don't work too well with dictation. All right. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about medical devices before I get into all the travel stuff. Um, there's an app called Hippocrates. Um, I'll pull it up. Launch Hippocrates. I have an 89-year-old mother. I don't see an app named Apocrites. Okay. <laughs> what is Apocrites? So now I'll just go, sir, I know it's EP. Apocrites. See the E? That's what it looks like. Apocrites. And it's probably going to ask me to do an update. I don't want to do an update. But this can do, it can check all the drug medications, everything else. But there's a thing called Pill ID. I'm going to, uh, I have no choice but to update now. Let me see if I can get out of it. Okay, I'll update it in the background. Oh, not going to take long. What Hippocrates can do is you put in a medication, and it can even show you what the pill looks like. My mom, who takes a, uh, a Lasix uh, uh, diuretic pill, and she had one sitting, she, she, she wouldn't, couldn't remember what this one pill was for. It just happened to be loose, so we wanted to know what pill bottle it went in. So we, I used Hippocrates, and it will even tell you the drug interactions and things. Uh, it is going to take a little while, so I'll come back out back to that. But you do pill ID. You essentially say it's a round pill. It's got a slice in it. It's got a number on it, and it'll identify virtually any pill. I have a lot of doctors as clients, and they even use this all the time. But it's free to use. All right. <clears throat> Travel. We talked earlier about Clark Howard and his podcast. Um, I, sound, I sound like I'm as bad of a Clark Howard fanboy as I am an Apple fanboy. Um, he has a website called ClarkHoward.com. Well, first of all, he started life as a travel agent. Remember those? Back in the day when they had real travel agents for everything, he was a travel agent for that. So if I go to ClarkHoward.com, Poor guy, he went through life with two first names. Or two last names. Two, first, two last names. Anyway, 
You go over here to Clark's Topics, down here to Travel. Pay no attention to the ads. He doesn't endorse anyone or get paid for these. These are ads that are just in the rotation from his website. But if you go down here to Travel Booking and Planning Guide, and I'll link him at, our web, at the website when I upload everything, here it shows you a lot of different places. Now, here who, li who here likes to travel? And we'll probably like to travel more. So the important thing is, is you only have, we only have so much time, so we want to make sure we travel really well in that time. But secondly, you only have so much money. So if you spend half on one trip, that means you can take a whole other trip. And I think we all probably have our bucket lists and things like that. I think there are some wonderful tools out there that allow you to do some amazing things for travel. Um, before we go further, if you are traveling somewhere, there's some things you need to do to your iPhone. And this kind of follows up with this morning's class. If you go into your, oops, let's get the iPhone up. In your iPhone, if you travel internationally, many times your carrier, if you're only going for a week, maybe two, your carrier may, not if it's Verizon or Sprint because they don't work internationally, because there's network, soon they will, you can activate an international plan with them. And that's, it's more expensive, but if you're just going to do light data and light calling, that's one way to go. Otherwise, if you have an unlocked phone, so if you have a Verizon iPhone 5 or 5S, you simply go over to Switzerland and you get off the plane and you see a little cell phone shop and you say, I need a SIM chip, and you buy a SIM chip and put it in the phone. And you get a really good deal for all the calls you want to make in Europe and the data. The problem is, it's then a long distance call back home. Your regular local number won't be working. But Apple's iMessage will work and things like that. But the most important thing is check before you go about your international capability because there are many people that have come back with $2,000, $3,000 phone bills because of the data. Your phone's constantly checking your mail. Well, you get off the plane and I'm there. I didn't make arrangements. Okay, boom. That could be bad. Occasionally, we go down to a little town, Algodonas, by Yuma, Arizona. It's across the border in Mexico. And sometimes you get the U.S. carrier. Sometimes you're getting the, the Mexican carrier. I don't have a plan on the Mexican carrier. So if I were to get data, even if it's just checking my mail or using the maps, it would be sucking the data from there. And believe me, AT&T wants to charge me a lot for that because they get charged a lot. But you'll come back from Europe and you might have a $3,000 bill, and you'll go, oh my gosh, what happened? Well, they'll cut it in half. But it's still a $1,500 bill. So it's like, instead of getting shot with a gun, you got stabbed with a knife. Just be warned ahead of time. Here's the best way to do it if you're going for a short time. If you press the settings and go to airplane, if I, go to air, if I turn airplane mode on right now, we're going to lose the screen here, okay? So I'm not going to turn airplane mode on. But you flip airplane mode on. In other words, we're turning all the radios off by turning the airplane mode off. It's what they wanted to have you do in the airplanes all the time. It turns off the Bluetooth. It turns off the Wi-Fi. It turns off your cellular data, and it turns off your phone calls. It essentially turns off every radio in your phone. That's when you're on a plane, that's fine. But when you're in another country, you for sure won't get billed from any data over there. You're on a cruise boat, same thing. The cell phone calls on a cruise boat are very expensive, and so is their data. But you can still activate Wi-Fi. So all you do is turn on airplane mode and then come down, because Wi-Fi gets turned off when we do it. We want to turn Wi-Fi back on. Now, Wi-Fi isn't free, but it is kind of. When you go home, you don't pay anything for your Wi-Fi. That's part of your internet. When you're here, when it works, you've got Wi-Fi. When you're at McDonald's, you've got Wi-Fi. The hotel you're probably staying at at Europe will give you free Wi-Fi. On the cruise boat, the Wi-Fi on board can be 70 cents a minute for the internet. You can buy a package and things like that. But what I do is, when I come to shore... I get up on the board with my iPad, and I, I turn on the Wi-Fi to see if there's any nearby Wi-Fi cafes. You know, the internet cafes. 
They're always by the ship ports because that's where they also make cheap phone calls back home using the voice over internet phone calls. So I sniff for the Wi-Fi. I see one I can maybe reach from the boat. Mm -hmm. And then I go off because I probably can't sign into it without paying a fee. Now the fee you pay for these Wi-Fi cafes is generally so much money for a certain amount of time. So you're not paying for how much you use, you're paying for how long you use it. Essentially, they're not really sophisticated. You walk in and they give you, it's like punching a time clock, okay, it starts here, you got an hour. Oh, you were here an hour and a half and they'll charge you. The farther you get from the cruise boat, the cheaper it gets. Because obviously there's a captive audience right by the cruise boat. But it's the same thing if you're traveling in Europe and you're not on a cruise boat, you go in, a cafe might have Wi-Fi and things like that. Many of the apps I'm going to show you require some data connectivity. And again, there's ways to get that by putting a card in. Depends on your phone that you have, the phone carrier you currently have here, and what kind of international ability they have. If you're going to travel a lot internationally, the best phone in the world is the iPhone 5 on Verizon. Even though Verizon doesn't work over there, their phone is completely unlocked and it will work on virtually every world carrier except one in Korea and one in China and one in Japan. So, uh, and that's, you would pay for that service. But Wi-Fi, you're paying for the time. It, like every McDonald's has free Wi-Fi, Starbucks has free Wi-Fi. It's the same thing over there. Their Wi-Fi is becoming fairly ubiquitous. You can kind of make phone calls on Wi-Fi. You can do FaceTime calls on Wi-Fi, you can do Skype calls, you can do things like that. But you can't make a telephone call from your telephone number to some other telephone over here just on Wi-Fi unless you have Varnage, Magic Jack, one of those. And if you're, if you're interested in that, we can talk about it, because I mean later, because I, I like the Magic Jack app. You pay so much and you've got it here. I made calls from South America and it was with a US number. People called me and it's just like it was here. Because once you're on the internet, it doesn't matter where you are. So those phones are routed over the internet to a phone. It's a little, I don't want to get out in the weeds in that because it can get pretty bad. Anyway, turn airplane mode on. That turns off all the radios. And then when you go to a Wi-Fi cafe, turn Wi-Fi on. No need to leave Wi-Fi on the entire time because it'll start to drain your battery a little bit. And you'd be surprised your battery will last tremendously longer by having it in airplane mode. Okay. When I go down near the border, I do that. Or what I do is I come down here to cellular. And in cellular, you want to make sure that data roaming is off. In other words, I was in San Diego two years ago, two and a half years ago on Thanksgiving. I'm in San Diego on, Coron on uh, the Navy Air Base, North Station, just by on Coronado. And luckily I had this off because up on top of my phone, up where it normally says at t it said Telcel, which is a Mexican carrier. And I got a little freaked out. I'm going, okay, I'm cheap. I don't want to get billed for this. So I took a screen. I did a Google map of where I was and took a screenshot. And I said, okay, AT&T, now try charging for this because I'm in the United States. Luckily, nothing happened. But I had data roaming off, and you should leave data roaming off all the time. As I'm close to the border, it means, oh, it might roam over and give me a, a, a carrier from Canada or a carrier from Mexico, and I might get billed for it. So if you leave data roaming off, you're fine. You can leave LTE on, and you definitely want to leave cellular data on. If you do go over to Europe and you want to use it just as a phone, you can turn cellular data off, and you won't get those surprise bills. Let's say you want to make sure you leave your phone on so somebody back here can reach you in an emergency. Turn cellular data off, but you'll still be able to receive phone calls. But it'll cost you. You had a question? Yeah. No? Yeah? No, I was just thinking. Okay. So those are in, that's in settings under cellular. So FaceTime doesn't cost you charges if you're somewhere you have Wi-Fi. If you're using Wi-Fi, FaceTime doesn't co cost you because it's using the data side. But what happens is so so let's let's make it easier, de-geekify it. If you're at home and you're on Wi-Fi, you're not getting charged for data or anything. It's just part of your internet package, right? If you're in the middle of I-5 where there's no Wi-Fi 
any data you do will be over your cellular network, right? But if you go to McDonald's and you hook up to their Wi-Fi, you're no longer getting charged for cellular data. FaceTime uses cellular data unless you have Wi-Fi, but it doesn't use your telephone side. There's two components of the cell service. There's the actual phone, and then there's the, the data side, but FaceTime uses the data side. And by the way, to save data, FaceTime now allows you to make voice-only calls. So instead of doing, because video calls, that man, on Skype and on FaceTime, that takes a lot of data because it's a big image. Big guy like me, man. I, I, I have a lot of data because I'm a big yeah. guy. So. so if you're, you're traveling and you want to use your phone overseas for a camera, what settings do you need all turned off? That you put it on airline? I mean, airline. If you're on airline mode, everything's off. Okay. And that's why if you turn everything off, and then for the time you need Wi-Fi, when you're at a Wi-Fi cafe, just turn Wi-Fi on for them. You can leave Wi-Fi on, but if you turn it on and off as you need it, you'll save battery life, because that's the other thing is plugging in and things like that. Because we know, I mean, you'll be surprised how long your battery life will last if you have Wi-Fi, if you have all your radios off. So to take photos, just think of this first as far as photos go, and I'm going to go into photos in a second. It's a digital camera. That's all it really is. Forget that it's a phone for that time being. The only thing is it won't load them up to your photo stream like we discussed yesterday unless you're on Wi-Fi. Okay? So it's important to think about it ahead of time. Check with your carrier. Send me an email. Do whatever you want because you don't want to have that surprise data charge when you get back. And it doesn't take much because your phones, I hear everybody's phone every so long going ding, ding. That's it checking for mail. Every time it checks for mail and maybe brings in a mail, it's using data over the cellular network unless you're on Wi-Fi. So you can check your mail over there, but you've got to make sure you're on Wi-Fi when you do. Just uh, I've known some people that have had some big data charges. So, can, go ahead. Uh, what if you're uh, abroad for an extended period, say, I'm oh, go ahead. Make us I'm jealous. Tell us how long. I'm leaving in three weeks for, uh, I'll be away for two months. Fantastic. Going for two months. Okay, anybody top that yet? I don't think so. Good job. Where are you going to go? Um, Europe? England, yes. yes. Okay. England, France. Do you have an iPhone? No, I'm taking my iPad. So your iPad is pretty much Wi-Fi only. You may have cellular. Do you have the cellular component for it? Yeah, Do you have a plan here? AT&T. Okay. What I you, haven't used it, though. Okay. So here's what you want to do when you go over there. If you're going for that long, and this would apply to your phone. If you have a phone, you want to find out if it's unlocked before you go. All iPads, if they're cellular, are always unlocked. So what you do is you go to Clark Howard's site, and it'll tell you where the best deal on SIM cards is. You get off the plane. You go not at the airport, but you find some of the little cell phone stores around, find out what the best deal is, and you get a SIM card to put in that, and you'll be surprised. The data rates in Europe are much less than here. You'll pop that SIM card in, and then you don't even care if you're wife on iPad. Into your iPad, because your iPad's unlocked. In other words, your, light, your iPad might say AT&T now, but it's not locked to it. Are you paying monthly on it, or you're not, used, not paying no, monthly? No. So don't worry about it. If you have a SIM card in it, if you have the ability to put a SIM card, if it's Wi-Fi and cellular. You can put a SIM card in this thing? Well, let's see. The way everybody can tell is at the very top of your iPad, there's a microphone. There's a microphone. And if, if at the top where the microphone above the camera is, if there's a plastic strip that's slightly different color than the rest of it, it's all aluminum, you're Wi-Fi only. Hers is Wi-Fi only. Does yours come out of here pretty easy? Yeah. Sure. Who has a who has a one that's not in the case? So this is straight aluminum all the way across, okay? On the top. Let me sure you should do that cellular. Mm -hmm. Well here I've got this one out now. Okay, I got sure easy. See the plastic strip here on the top? It's a slightly different color, and that's because that's where the antenna is for the cellular. Okay, so if you're all aluminum, 
you don't have cellular, if you have a little bit different strip at the very top above the camera, it will be cellular. You have cellular, he has cellular on his. Connie, you have cellular. So there's a little spot on the slide where they pop out and put a SIM card in. And what you would do, because they're unlocked, you could go over there and you would just get a SIM card, put that SIM card in, and you're paying per month or for a certain amount of data. A good friend of mine travels to Indonesia all the time, and he just pops a SIM card in when he gets there. So don't subscribe to the at and No, because your at and International will be terrible rates. Save the card when you pop it out, the at and card, but just over there, they'll pop it in. They'll pop in the card for Orange, Vodafone. There's one called Free. There's all these different carriers over there, and you'll get a pretty good rate. And then you don't have to find a Wi-Fi spot. You're going to have coverage everywhere people normally have cell phone coverage. It's just like on the iPhone. We have phones and we have data. Hey, Ken, so, do the so, rates change from country to country? It depends on the carrier over there and the card. So what happens is, is that you. that's where if you... The best thing to do is research it before you go on what countries you're going to cover and maybe just get one card for the whole time or if it's a good deal you can switch as you go but there are there are some carriers that cover the whole place so uh, so, so the, the answer is yes on that so you get one for uh, like a two month period then. yes it's your match, right? and you may not it may not be for you may get it where you pay for the a period or you pay for just the amount of data you use and that's one of the regular telephone stores that you find over yep. there. And if you go to Clark Howard's site, he has some good insight on good ones that are over there because he knows this stuff right off the top of his head. The guy is a genius. So then you can do FaceTime on your iPad. And, and you're using the data. Phone. Now, consequently, if you're paying for your data, you still want to use Wi-Fi as much as possible, right. like here, but it gives you a great alternative. And remember, to do that on your phone you have to have your phone unlocked. And it has to be a T-Mobile or AT&T phone unless it's the iPhone 5 from Sprint and Verizon will work over there too. Okay? So you can do all the email and all that you want to do. From Wi-Fi or from the SIM like that. Yep. I know it gets a little confusing, but it's really kind of doing a lot. So, all right. Can, can you say iPhone 5? You mean iPhone 5S? 5 or 5S, they're the same, yeah. In that regard, they're the same. Uh, and I assume the new one on Verizon will do the same thing, but we don't know for sure. The iPhone 6, when and if. I'm, sorry, I'm sure it's not if, it's when. All right. So that covers your phone when you go over there. The iPad, you don't have to worry about as much unless you're paying for an AT&T plan here. If you're currently on any type of plan on cellular here, you be careful when you go over there because it's... It, it can add up. All right. So that's before you leave, before, right before you leave or when you leave, you're on the plane. But let's talk about some sites that are incredible and an incredible way to book your reservations and do different things. So these are where I'm going to just throw a bunch of these out there so Lisa or Sean can write them down and then I'll come back to them. These are, these are your travel sites. You yeah, so in Clark Howard's here, there's a bunch of here. TripAdvisor, I'll, I'll run through most of these, but what I want to point out is one that I get emails from, and it's called The Flight Deal. And these are incredible. So a lot of us can probably just choose to travel whenever we want to travel. And... The flight deal comes up, and I signed up for an email list from them. Let me see if I can get one of the emails up in a sec here. But they come across, and they have about, I get an email from them about four times a week, three or four times a week, and they'll have New York to Singapore. They'll have Houston to Bali. They'll have different things like that. But some of these deals are just amazing that the airlines kind of, say, oh, wow, we've got all this space available. Let's go ahead and sell these. And they're not always for coming up right now. So let me get the flight. So here's that, the most... What is the name of the app, the flight deal? It's not an app. It's a newsletter. It's called The Flight oh. Deal. And I think it's theflightdeal.com. Let me be sure. Yeah, theflightdeal.com. So I signed up for this newsletter. So let's, let's just look at what we got here. The headlines are San Jose to... Oh, not to Oakland. You wouldn't want to fly from San Jose to Oakland, I wouldn't think. 
But San Jose to Austin. Oh, great. Well, that didn't do us any good. Phoenix, Dallas, and Philadelphia to Panama City. Uh, Seattle to Central America. Uh, Los Angeles to Bogota. Jesse might like that to go to Medellin. And it's $554. Uh, so there weren't a lot for us. Oh, San Francisco to Singapore. Round trip. All classes. 765 Now, it usually tells you the airline in front of it. And you probably don't want to go Delta. But a lot of times they'll have LAN, which is South American Airlines. They've got a bunch of different ones. Uh, so if I click on that deal. So I'll go down. Let's just look at the Bogota one. San Francisco to Bogota, it tells you about it. Oh, remember to enter a gift card. Okay, that's a sweepstake. So, uh, Eastern Fair sample. See, travel dates, and they give a wide variety of travel dates. And you simply click on that link, and it takes you to the website where it is. And it's not, I, I mean, I see, what I say, I, three or four times a week I get this, and out of two newsletters, I'll find a flight that's very interesting. That if I wanted to go, I wanted to go. But it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in airfares, too. So here it was. It talks to you about it. And it's not right away. I mean, these have some travel dates. See, this is May to June. Some of the, yeah, must purchase by May 23rd. The travel days, you know, there's some classifications in here. But there are some pretty sweet deals occasionally. These aren't the killer, killer deals, but they're pretty good. Um, so just to reiterate, then you can sign on and subscribe to this. To the newsletter, yes. Get the newsletter. Yes. If we go to Tra Clark Howard's website, again, this is probably better than I can do for any of this stuff. International Travel Guide, you know how to watch your money. Uh, important to use, make sure check with your credit card ahead of time to find out if you get charged an exchange fee. Many credit cards, if you go to credit union, usually not, but check with your credit card company. They sometimes charge a surcharge if you're going to exchange it for different monetary funds over there. A lot of them don't, so check that ahead of time. Um, you want to let them know, because we went over there and didn't tell them, and it didn't work. <laughs> she said, you want to let them know. Yes, you do. I have a funny example of that. I used to take my mom to Arizona for three months every year. I'd drive her down, and then I'd fly back, leave her with her car down there. Well, we're going through Mom Likes Denny's, so we stop at Denny's in Blythe. And uh, Blythe's in the U.S., right? Or in California, yes, right? California. California. So we stop at Denny's and Blythe. She pays with her credit card. I'm driving, so she's buying dinner, right? So we come across the border, because I think gas is a little cheaper in Arizona. We're only about 10 miles away. I stop at the little truck stop, and I grab her card to fill up her car for her, and it says, please see cashier. And it's like one of these big truck stops, and the cashier is way over there, and it's cold and windy, and I'm like, oh, God. So I, I start trucking over there, and I go, I'm going to try it again. And I turn around, and my mom's on her cell phone in her car. And I go, Mom's never on her cell phone. I go, and she, I hear her say, we're not in Arizona. And she had been asleep in the car. And so I said, yeah, we're in Arizona. Who's that? She said, it's the credit card company. I said, oh, yeah, we're in Arizona across here. And they said, oh, okay. I turned back around, put the credit card in the pump, and it worked that quick. Now, think about this computer program over there says, they just charged in California. Now they're charging in Arizona. Well, little do they know they're 10 miles away. It's, in fact, a whole different state. And that's how this stuff works. And so you want to help your credit card company and let them know if you are going somewhere like that. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a great thing, not just state to state, but I mean as far as this. I, I do quite a bit of travel, and I'll reiterate what you say. On every credit card you're going to use, tell the company before you leave, and they will mark your file. That yep. you can, they can expect charges from France, Spain, et cetera, et cetera. And also, uh, on credit And cards, let them know when you get back so they will precisely inter intercept any fraudulent and charges. There are, three, there are three credit cards that I'm aware of. There are debit cards. That where there are no fee, they charge, they give you back any fees uh, from ATMs, that ATMs charge. Be careful using debit cards. Even though it might have the Visa logo and you say run as a credit card, you do not have the same protection as you do with a credit card. A credit card, the most money you'll ever be out of pocket is $50. On a debit card, it's up to your institution. They can say, nope, we're not covering anything, or they can cover it 100%. 
So be careful with debit cards. Right. So that's why you should stick to either Charles Schwab, Fidelity, or TD Ameritrade. Well, but there's some good travel bonus cards you can do, like the Capital One Venture card, which gives you great travel miles and things well, like I'm that. Really but talking about just getting money in foreign exchange from ATMs. Yeah, almost. See, there was a big lawsuit recently, and so now a lot of the card companies they have to disclose it, but most of them charge a reasonable rate. But just check ahead of time, okay? And I don't recommend taking a lot of cards with you, but I would also recommend taking a photo of your credit card and take a photo of your passport and keep that photo of your passport with you because it's a lot easier if your passport gets lost or stolen to have a photo of it with you and you can do a lot better. My purse was stolen in Washington DC last year and so of course I needed ID to get back on the plane so I had my son scan my passport and send it. They would not let me use it. I didn't say they'd let you use it, but if you go to the State Department with a picture of your passport, you're gonna, it's going to make life a lot easier. Okay? And you know how in many hotels they'll take your passport and things like that to hold on to it around the cruise ships. They'll do that. So at least that way you have a copy of it if you get separated somehow. Use your, we're going to talk about photo apps in this. This thing is amazing. I mail a package. I take a picture of it on the FedEx counter so they can't say, oh, that package was damaged when you brought it in. Well, no, it wasn't. I'm at Costco. I want to, something has dimensions on a throw rug. I want to remember those dimensions. I take a picture of it and go home. I research it. I look up things on here and I take it home and research it. It is very, very, very useful. And photograph your rental cards too. Before you yes. Them yes. Photograph anything on your rental car and photograph it when you bring it back so they don't say, hey, we found this car here and it's got a big dent in it. Well, it didn't have a dent in it when I took this photo. And remember, your photo is both location and time stamped. Use, and then when you're all done with it, delete the photo. Uh, signing into a hotel, like when, I, when mom and I, I'd, I'd bring her back. We would stop by in Salt Lake City. I take a picture of the license plate. If I have a rental car and I'm checking the hotel, I take a picture of the license plate. I go up to the counter and say, what's your license number? I just look through the camera, it's right there. It's a lot easier than running back and forth, especially with the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, as big as that hotel is. You don't want to go back down to the parking lot, trust me. Okay. Uh, apps. So we talked about Yelp earlier. TripAdvisor helps dramatically to tell you about where you're going to be staying and hotel accommodations, etc. They also have a tie-in to book things through there. But really, to find out, hey, I've looked at this place, and I want to see what kind of ratings it gets. So you can go to TripAdvisor.com. We won't weed through it, but it's all based on reviews. It's very similar to an eBay seller has reviews. Um, there, are, there are some great sites for international travel. In fact, Kark mentioned some here. Mobisimo, right here. Mobisimo for international travel is very good deals. There's Kayak is a wonderful app and website to get deals. But there's some new technology out, one called Faircast. And so a lot of you might just need the spur to go on a trip. And if a trip gets down to a certain price, you might decide to go. Faircast will tell you, it kind of uses artificial intelligence and forecasts in the future what historically have been the prices of flights on these days. So Faircast is a really good one for that. Fair Compare is another one. Um, but we're talking about hotels, we're talking about airlines. Don't forget, you can rent people's rooms or homes and you want Airbnb. There's two other good ones, but Airbnb gives you the best protection. So. Those of you that have properties, I have a couple of clients who have properties in Monterey, they offer them on Airbnb, and you have to get approved for your property, and the person, there's a, there's a, a approval process you go through for the person too, so they know they're not just renting it out to some meth head that's going to cook in the house and then leave, like, you know, like from Breaking Bad, where they termite report, you know. Um, those that know Breaking Bad know what that re refers to. Uh, Airbnb protects you because the person you're renting from doesn't get paid until you say everything went smooth. Is it A-I-R-B? A-I-R-B, the letter B, 
N B. Let me see if he has it here. N N. Yeah, well, here it is. Airbnb. Now, San Francisco is really cracking down on Airbnb because these people are like hotels, and us as politicians don't get money from them from their lobbyists. So we can't have this, and they're starting to crack down on it a little bit. There's a little known rule that's called the uh, the U.S. Open Rule, where people can rent their rooms or their houses for up to seven days without becoming a hotelier. So that's because of the the open in Augusta. People have these homes, and they rent them out for tens and twenties of thousands of dollars for that week that the U.S. Open is there. So they essentially pay their mortgage payment by by that, but you can do it for up to seven days. So if you have a home you want to rent out, or you want to rent a room, and I'll tell you, all everybody that's used it loves it, and you get some nice accommodations for less than hotel rates. Okay, so Airbnb. The other two are VRBO, Vacation Rentals by Owner. They are now have felt the pressure from Airbnb. They're starting to um, have these approval processes where what, what happened with VRBO, you were dealing direct with the, the person you're renting from, and so therefore they might hold out on the deposit or things like that. So that's coming a little bit. And then Home Away is another one. I don't know about the, oh, Veneer, I don't know about that one. Uh, is the Airbnb international? Yes, pretty much, but I think it depends on locale. So the best thing to do is go search them. I haven't searched them for international much. I want to point out some good, I didn't know this one was on here, some good travel uh, resources down here. Uh, bidding for travel. Who uses Priceline or Hotwire here? Anybody? Priceline and Hotwire is a great way to kind of bid on a four-star hotel that's really a three-and-a-half-star hotel, and you don't know what you're getting. And then when you finally make the reservations, oh, yeah, it's the Hilton, uh, the Hilton Garden Inn or something like that. So you get some pretty good rates. And one does it by bid. The other one, Priceline, has this. They're constantly changing. You know, uh, what's uh, William Shatner is the spokesperson for, is it Priceline or Hotwire? Priceline. But what bidding for travel does is kind of lets you know what the going rate is that people are getting when they bid for these certain places. And you'd be surprised if you don't care. And it'll say, you can say, okay, I want to be in Las Vegas and I want to be within two miles of the strip. And that's what your criteria will be. And I want a, a four-star hotel. And then it'll give you that criteria. And that's the only ones it'll bid on. And then once you get it, you've, I mean, you don't know which one you get until you've successfully bid and decided to stay. Um, oh, Sea Guru is the bomb. I'll show you that in a second. Johnny Jet, this guy's great. He's on one of my favorite podcast networks, Twit, This Week in Tech. Not This Week in Travel. And then, uh, I don't know about Trip Twit, but uh, Johnny Jet is this guy who goes around and he tells you all the little inside scoops, like what to watch out for in certain places. And I like it because he's very much a realist. He says, oh, yeah, all these people are worried about this town and stuff. Oh, that's not a problem. There's two blocks that are a problem. You only hear about it, et cetera. So he's really, really, really good. And he travels all over the place. Uh, and he's not tied to any particular airline. He just does it. And he gets free flights out of it. But he really does. It's like... Car and driver tells you about cars. They're going to give you the lowdown. Um, Seat Guru has an app, but we're going to go to SeatGuru.com because, as a big guy, it's important where I'm going to sit on the plane. It's also going to be where I want to see if they have. Actually, I'll go to LAN. That was one of my favorite airlines. So I'll go to LAN. Uh, LAN Airlines. And I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to say, okay, well, which plane do I want? I'm going to be flying on a Boeing 767, so I click on that. And here's two versions of the aircraft, and this shows me what seats to avoid and what seats are good seats. What color is the The avoids are the yellows. So this one will probably say, because it's by a laboratory, watch what happens. And they do have an app. I'm just showing you because it's a little easier with us here. So as I hover over that, it says, these probably don't recline, first of all. Yeah, limited recline and the close proximity to the laboratory might be bothersome. 
and it has on-demand TV and AC power. This is one thing I loved about LAN. My mom was on as oxygen, so we had enough batteries, but it was so much easier if we could plug her oxygen in. And more importantly, I could plug my laptop in while we're on this flight from Buenos Aires back to um, Florida. So, you know, almost all of them have plugs. If you look, even back in economy here, see, AC power, plug, seat. These are good seats because you, you've got a lot of room here, but remember, you won't have a fold-down tray. You probably have the in-the-seat tray, things like that. The armrest, it's not movable. So virtually any airline, and then what you want to do is find out which type, which plane you're flying on. Southwest is all 737s. Don't worry about Southwest, you know. But uh, Seat Guru is really cool, and it does tell you some different things to watch out for. Is, I had forgotten about it. I'm glad I saw it. It's South American. I don't know. Yeah, it just flies South America. Yeah, I, I mean, I just so here I was. We're 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 coming back. We went down to South America on a cruise, and we're flying back, right? So I'm go, I'm going. Oh man, everybody, half the people on the cruise got America, and the rest of the people got land. I'm going. Oh, we got this land thing. Oh my God, you were treated like royalty. It was great. Breakfast and dinner, wine with dinner, free and seat entertainment, AC ports. I mean, I no, was that so... that is an app, like Food Advisor. This, this would be... They do have an app on the phone and the iPad, Seat Guru, yes. But I just went to the website because it's a little easier to visualize. So uh, that's kind of it for Clark Howard for right now. Um, use TripAdvisor for... Ratings on hotels. I went to Catalina with uh, Jesse, Angie's husband, the other owner here, uh, in January. And I used TripAdvisor to find if it was okay. And I used some other sites to find out what the rates were and things like that. If you ever want to find out who flies where, I use TripAdvisor. So, uh, I'm sorry, not TripAdvisor. I use uh, Travelocity. I don't usually, but I do that for just real quick fare comparisons. Travelocity, O-C-I-T-Y, Expedia. Some of those different sites aren't that great. Kayak is really the one you want to use. Um, speaking of airplanes, what flights are overhead? Checking on that. All right, here's what I got. These are the flights over top of us right now <laughs> as we speak. Rachel, why do you want to know that? Because I can. He wants to show off. Yeah, overhead right now. When was this when was he supposed to take off? Uh, well, an hour ago. Well, you know, okay, so you go pick up friends at the airport. So I just had a guy that I do some work with fly out from uh, Milwaukee via Atlanta. And he was on Delta, so I sit in the cell phone lot, and I go right onto Delta's app. I have his flight number, and I check it, and it tells me how soon it's coming. And, in fact, it said landing in one minute, and he texted me just after they, shot, they touched down. I mean, it's accurate as can be, and it even shows you where it is. So the flight status apps, there's some flight apps for that, but usually the airline itself. So Southwest, Delta, I think Southwest does now. Don't quote me for sure, but I can also go in here. And if I have my if I if I have a frequent flyer number with them, and I have the app, as I get to the airport, the proximity will say you're by the airport. You probably need this ticket. The ticket pops up in Passbook. I can put my phone. It has the little barcode, QR code on it. I show that to TSA. They let me through. I go to the gate. They scan that. And I'm off on the airline, and I've never had to print a ticket. Now, did that just happen? Because for a while, about a year ago, we could use our iPhones, and then they stopped it for Southwest. No, Southwest had kind of a weird thing, but I think they've reactivated now. I know Delta and United do it, but I think Southwest. I'll have to look into it because I just read some, and I haven't taken a Southwest flight since then. Southwest is pretty cutting edge, you know. They, I'm surprised that it's taken them a while. You're rolling that out airport by airport. Is that what it is? Thank you. So, and just was Sacramento up yet? I think so, yeah. And by the way, if you're flying southwest, is it still free Wi-Fi at the airport? I think it is in Sacramento. At the airport? Yeah. yeah. Hey, get the... Yes? I, 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 from our trip to Chicago. Was, How long ago? Uh, that was back in February. 
On Southwest? Yeah. So Southwest has a great one. You sit in this nice, comfortable chair. They've got power adapter, and they got USB cables, and I'm getting free Wi-Fi. I'll get here two hours early. That's a more comfortable chair than I got at my house. And I'll be sitting there and just surfing away, just like I would be at home because I don't have a life. But uh, I'm traveling somewhere, so I must have a life, right? Go ahead. I just have a question about that Sky Map to your house. Oh, it was Siri. What flights are overhead? Let and, me check that. And there's some apps that do this. Here is what I found. So, read this or the map? Well, I'm trying to understand. It, it's, uh, is that meant to give you the aspect of the I think it is. You know, I haven't pulled that up yet. Sun. Noon, so sun. A north orientation would be going up. Yeah, it says locations used on projections on delayed data. Angles with respect to nominal horizon. So... And there it says, oh, Wolfram Alpha gets it from. But there's some apps that will do you. There's even apps that say what satellites are overhead and things like that. But uh, so the, speaking of landing somewhere, and they've got Wi-Fi, launch App Store. There's a fairly new thing in the App Store where it says apps near me. So you've just landed in Rome. This isn't Rome. And I click on this, and these will be apps pertinent to my current location. If I'm in a national park, maybe it would be a national park app. Obviously, there's nothing in, in Orangevale or Citrus Heights that's a, it's taking a while to load. But it will be apps around where you are that you might want. Some are free, some are pay, et cetera. So Starbucks, NBA, Safe Credit Union, that's Sacramento, right? The Kings, uh, okay, public radio, sac uh, the public radio. Uh, Sacramento B. These are all apps that are location-based by us. We don't have a ton of things, but if I was in, if I was in New York, I'm sure there would be a lot that would pop up. So apps near me. Uh, Faircase, Capital One, Airbnb. Oh, nerd. Oh, so we talked about credit cards briefly earlier. There's some there's some great sites to go to, and I'll link these also. Credit card tune-up. You basically put in what your spending patterns are, and it'll tell you what card would be the best for you. You don't want to do airline cards anymore because it's so hard to redeem them. You want cash credit towards tickets on these that you can spend on any airline because there's no blackout dates and stuff. They used to be a bargain to go the other way. Uh, plus, the other nice thing is, is if you do use it to, say, fly an American, when you're flying an American, you're going to get the miles credits on the American frequent flyer to go the other way. But Southwest has got, Southwest is good about redeeming them, but some of these others are really bad. And there's another one called Nerd Wallet. Of course, I would like that. And one last travel one I forgot is called Hip Monk. And I'll link that too. Hip Monk. What is it? It's just uh, another one like a travel site on deals. It's deals on travel. Yes. All right. Mobissimo. Okay. So we land in Italy. And we're going to assume you have data because these most some of these things will only work when you have data. So if I land in Italy, and we think very soon it's coming where you'll speak to your phone and it will speak a translation for you. So is this Spain? Okay, I've landed in Spain instead, I think. So, uh, English to Oh, no, 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 I don't want Air Translate. All right, I'm going to go back to the one I know. It's called Translate by Google. Not I, I translate is very good, but I'm going to go here because I know this one like the. So I'm I'm going to land in Italy. So I have this little interface up, and I've selected English to one of 85 different languages. Uh, okay, I've chose to put it in Italian. Surely it can help me if it's wrong here. So I'll close that, and I'm going to say. 
Where is the best place to get dinner? It's working. Bad internet connection right now. It's not even showing working here, but it's working here. Somebody's vibrating, not me. It's... I'm going to end it. I'll try to end it. It's The internet is lagging terribly. So, if you see down here, one more beer, English to Spanish. Come on. Beer, please. Oh, no, I don't want English. ¿Dónde está la estación de ferrocarril más cercana? Angie, that was? Where is the uh, train? Nearest train station. So here it is in French. So if I can get this back up on the screen, I'm going to go and darn it. I'm going to make create network, create. We're having dropouts again. Sorry, I've got to get the phone displayed for you here. Ken, I have a friend whose daughter got this great job in France, and her husband's there who speaks no French, with two children, three and under. And he was just able to get a washer and dryer, purchase a washer and dryer, and get it installed simply because of his iPhone. Mm -hmm. And the translation. Yeah. And if you want to learn that other language, there's an app called Duolingo. It's free. Duo, D-U-O. L-I-N-G-O, Duolingo, and it's wonderful. Okay, come on, come on. Now, are we talking about an app or is it? The translation app, Duolingo is an app. Is it an app? Yes. There we go. So if I go back to the Google Translate, just translate. So let's see if I can get it to work here. Where is the nearest restaurant? So there, oh, it's come up here. So I'll just play it. It'll show on the screen in a minute. Dove si trova il ristorante più vicino? There it was. Okay. And I can say, go Italian to English. Someone could speak in here English or Italian, and it would put it in English for you. So that's translate. Uh, let's go. I just hit the arrows to swap the case back. So I'm going to go English to, oh, let's do Chinese simplified. How are we doing? Is that right? Oh, you're Japanese, right? So let's go to Japanese. And you'll see it gives it in the kanji script or in. It's sometimes not grammatically correct, but it gets the point across. Not polite the way to do it, so I'll get slapped. Can I take out your wife tonight? <laughs> I think that added more in there, like he better not or something, huh? Yeah. But it gets the point across, right? No, this is Google Translate. The app looks like this. Just translate, but it's Google. It's free, completely free. But you have to have an internet connection for that. Okay? Because... It's recording what I say, sends it out over the internet, and comes back with a description. Okay?
Yeah, it's 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 not perfect. Can I take your wife? Can I take my wife? I don't have one, so you can do whatever you want with it. Can I take out your wife? Oh, it's probably because the way I said it too. It's the way I said it. All right, so that's translate now. We talked earlier about podcasts. You should have a bunch stored up on your phone so you can travel over there with it. And you're going to take some photos. Now, there are some one. First of all, does anyone know what the best camera in the world is? The one you have with you. Al has some great cameras, but when he has his iPhone and only his iPhone, it's all of a sudden the best camera Al has. When he's got his big rig, He'll use his cameras, but he probably occasionally takes a shot with his iPhone because it will not only date stamp it correctly, it will GPS stamp that photo. So when you go back and you go, well, was that that valley by the river next to the two trees? I can't remember. And then you get in an argument with whoever you traveled with. And hey, it's got a stamp on it where you were. Okay, Some of the higher end cameras have GPS stamps in them too. But this... The newer the iPhone, the better the camera is. So we're going to go into cameras because we're talking about travel. And I'm going into the camera app quickly. Oops, let's get the one that has the pointer on it. Into the camera app. Now, it's a little bit different interface than it was before. I have photos right now. I can do landscape or do portrait. Let's get rid of this other thing. I can do landscape or do portrait, right? Oh, there it is, the neat little mural up there. This camera also has very good low light sensitivity. So the majority of the time, you'd leave your flash off because your flash only works so far. And this way, it opens it up for the rest of the stuff. I'll keep stop moving so we don't mess up. But this is also a high-definition video camera. Remember the old ones, you put the tape in and you prop it up on your shoulder and you're bumping into people? This has higher definition than that. But do yourself a favor. When you do video, do it horizontal in landscape mode because a TV screen is built just like Ken. It's wider than it is tall. Okay. You want your video to be wider than it is tall. Otherwise, you're just going to get this little thing like this. When you do take videos, oh, my light went on because it needed it. I'll stop. When you're done taking videos, make sure you swap back to the still camera so you don't mistakenly do video next time. Let's look at that video I just made. Give it a second here. Come on. Ooh, that's kind of blurry. It's not going to... How does that take data? Not to take it. If I need to send it up, it will. Oh, my light went on because it needed it. I'll stop. Okay. And then I'm just going to delete it because it takes room up too. Now, the camera, unfortunately, does a weird thing on this thing when I go to camera. But what I want to point out is, so I've got a room here where it's darker right there than it is up here, right? So the problem is, or even if I go down here, it's pretty dark and go up here. On your regular camera, you know how you hold down the shutter button part way to lock everything in? That way, if I want the bright light or want the dark. On the iPhone, if I want to focus on this, I tap the screen one time and say, OK, adjust the light setting and the focus for right where I tapped. If I want to do it back here, I tap up there. You can kind of see the little yellow. It focuses on there or focuses down here. See how it's changing the light of it a little bit? See how it lightens and darkens? But as I move, it's going to change. Like, see there? If I go to that, see it makes everything else dark? Hopefully that's showing up. But if I press and hold, it locks. You'll see it go, 
tap, tap, boom, boom. See that? That means it's locked in. Now my light, when I come down here, everything else is too dark because I, I said lock it on the real bright thing. Does that make sense? Let's go back over that. If I want to just adjust it, I tap one time and it'll adjust for right there where I'm tapping. But if I want to lock in, let's go here where it's pretty dark. If I'm going to lock in here, and then I go here, everything's over bright. Let's go back here and let's lock in where it's bright. By pressing and holding, boom, boom, it's locked. Now look how dark it is down here. See how dark it is? Because I locked in where it was more light. So all I do is tap the screen and I release that lock. And now it adjusts accordingly. So again, tap what you want to focus. But if you want to lock it in on that, press and hold and it goes boom, boom. And it only stays locked for one shot. Okay? Yeah, if you... Yeah, you're able to do the lock on it. You may not have this HDR thing, and on the iPad, you don't have a flash. But flash, you don't use that much because these have really good low light in the cameras anyway. HDR is on automatically now on the newer iPhones. HDR takes two shots. It takes a shot of the light and a shot of the dark and merges them to give you much better lighting. We'll take a good example here. So if I'm looking at here... You'll notice back by that sign, it's pretty bright, right? And over here, it's a little darker. So if I take an HDR, it turned out pretty bright. Well, where did you find the HDR? HDR is automatic. It's at the top. It'll just say, if I, if I look at the screen here, if I go back to camera, right up at the very top, can you see HDR auto? Does everybody have that or not? Some people may not have auto if you have an older phone. Yeah, now it's on. If you have a newer phone, it, it's automatic. The only time you don't want HDR is if it's like a moving shot, like a sports shot. So now the other one over here is well, square is like if you're going to post on Facebook and panorama. So panorama, I'm going to, this is really, really cool. I did a panorama in the middle of Arches National Park. I was up on a bluff and I did a panorama shot. So watch this. I'm going to do this. It says move the arrow. And now I'm going to stop. And now, that panorama is, oh, it really doesn't show, oh, it's going to be a slight delay. No, but I'm moving it. I'm trying to move it. Doesn't, it doesn't work well through this process of airdrop, but you can see here it stitched it all together. It took about five different photos, but you would never know that. It stitches together so, automatically. And that you use it in portrait mode. You take the camera in portrait, or you take the picture in portrait mode because it's going to make the photo really wide. You don't need to make it any wider. In other words, you want all the top down, bottom you can get. So yes, it's going to come out in wide mode, but you want to take it in tall mode. Okay? So, an app I've been playing with recently, and Val turned me on to it, and it's called Pro HDR, and it kicks butt. It's a buck ninety nine Pro HDR, and I'll pull it up. And this is fun Pro HDR. Now, this will take high definition. HDR stands for what? High dynamic range, right? High dynamic range means it takes a photo of the bright stuff and a photo of the dark stuff and melds them together. So if we take a photo here, you'll notice it's kind of dark underneath Charles's table there. I'm getting, now you, this is one where you've got to hold it very still because it takes a while for the two photos to go. I, in fact, have a little Joby Gorilla Pod, and I wrap this around my tripod when I'm taking pictures with my big camera. But anyway, I'm going to do it here.
So now if we look at this, look at how much light this brought in. And look at the resolution of the colors on this dark wall. And even back there. I take a lot of sunset and sunrise photos. What's in front of me gets pretty much washed out. Or not washed out, it's black because it's focusing on that. I'll show you. These two photos, this was taken with my regular expensive Canon camera. These were taken with Pro HDR. And you see, how I had to really pull the color out of this, but look at the color I did here on Pro HDR. This was dark in my Canon camera. Pro HDR on my iPhone gave me this wonder. It oversaturates, it looks fake, it looks like it's a watercolor. But it's so cool. Al's been doing some great ones. But and it's a buck ninety-nine. This was one right here. Nice. And I and I didn't touch this thing. That was the app. I pride myself in pretty much uploading it like it is. I tweak these a little bit. See how this doesn't show anything here? Well, this was essentially the same area as this. And look at how the forefront looks. So when you have that app on your phone. Use your camera, does it automatically do that? No, you use the camera in the app itself, but it saves it to the camera roll. So I'm going to take a photo again. Actually, so if I tap this photo, let me go back to reflector. So here's the photo, so I can turn it this way or whatever. But if I hit done, it's going to say, Do you want to save it? So I say save, and it'll save it to my camera roll. And then it sits with all your other photos. But I have lots of adjustments. I haven't touched this. But I can say, let's go ahead and let's up the brightness a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Contrast. Oh, let's give it lots of color. Look how much more color I gave it. You know? I can tint it. I can do warmth. I can put filters on it. I don't even touch any of that. Those photos I'm showing you here were straight out of the, this. I just hit save. You have to take the photo with that. With Pro HDR app. Okay, you can't do that after you take a regular photo. No. There's programs you can do that with and stuff, but really it's just a, but remember, you've got to be pretty stationary and you don't want to do things that are moving because there's a, there's a, what, about a half second up to a second between the two shots. So you got somebody going by, boom, and then they're out of the picture or part of them. And the other thing I had is I was out taking a picture of the cemetery where my father is buried right over here this way. And it was a, and the flags were fluttering. So it didn't work too well. The little flags that were on each of the grave, it was Memorial Day weekend. So that didn't work too well for that because the flags were moving. So um, when, Pro when HDR, 199. When you do Pro HDR, it automatically gives you your camera? And it's got, it uses the Apple camera, and it just is a kind of a, an enhancer, yeah. is to, for lack of a better. Now, the Apple built-in HDR is much better better as far as a cleaner photo and stuff. It's a more true lifelike photo. This is better than lifelike, if there's such a thing. It's more saturated. It oversaturates, but it's kind of cool. Go ahead. Okay. Are you going to go over the, the green, red, and blue um, icon in the corner too? Because I've been taking photos, and they're not coming out. They may not, my settings may not be right. I can check that. They're not, they're not coming out the way I want them. So I, I hit that, and it gives you I don't use filters. Okay, well, because you can do that after the fact. That's how I've been changing my photos to look better before I send them because they're, they look terrible. You can do that. You can you can do that in an app on here. You can do it in the photos themselves. So if I go to photos, okay. so if I go to photos, and I go to here's this thing in this bag here. And if I go here and I hit edit, I have in the middle of the screen the exact same thing right here. So now I can go in and change, not exactly, well, yeah, it's the same ones. Yeah. I can change it to, say, process like that. And then I can se send it and save it. I don't have to do it when I'm taking the photo. But it, consequently, if you have one of those you like, you're seeing real time what it's going to look like with the filter on it. And I have a feeling once you go back, you can remove that filter in the, in the photos here. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I don't, I don't filter any of mine. 
it's, it's a hassle to have to do it separately each, each time. So I, I need to check, check my settings. Yeah, and the other thing is what helps is when you can lock in on the bright part. Like, let's say you're taking a picture of somebody and there's a lot of bright light behind them. Okay? If there's bright light behind them, you don't want that. You press and hold on their face and it will adjust the settings for the darker face and lessen the background. Last app I'm going to talk about on the phone, I really love. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. No, uh, have you ever used a program called Spyglass? No. It, it, uh, it superimposes a lot of its metadata, including your uh, longitude and latitude. Your, uh, uh, I just sent you a screenshot of what it looks like. Uh, check your messages. He's always got some great things. I mean, TPE. It hasn't come through yet, but it will. So Spyglass o overlays the metadata. It, it, over it overlays this big circle. It gives you like your north orientation you are, your relative oh. azimuth. Spyglass. How much Spyglass. is it? I don't know, it's like a buck or two. It's a well, let's go. Damn it. I get it for 20% off, though. There you go. Do you guys know that? iTunes gift cards. I buy my iTunes gift cards when they're 20% off, and therefore anything on here is a 20% discount. So I'm going to search Spyglass. How do you know when they're 20% off and where? They're ads, and it'll be part of my the newsletter thing I'm going to do whenever they come up, because those are going to be $3.99. That's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm going to buy it. 33 reviews, four and a half stars. The best thing is Al said it's good, so I know it's good. You know, he's a, talking about taking a photograph. He's the one that tied me up. On the screen. That's, that's great. So the other one I want to talk about is we have the Pano app that's built into the iPhone, but there's another app I really, really, really like, and it's called 360 Pano. And the reason I like it is it gives me a sound when I'm doing panoramas. So let me pull it up. It's either Pano 360 or 360 Panorama. Oops, not Panny. 360 Pano. Now this app is another Panorama app, but what's really cool, and it's what, a buck ninety-nine, I think. This is one of the long apps I used a long time ago. When I was in Utah at Arches National Park, I get up on a on a mound and I wanted to do a 360. But I'm out in the really bright light. So I couldn't see my screen to take a regular panorama. So I'm going to start here with this. First of all, the Apple app only goes 270 degrees, which is fine, and it's super high resolution. But if I do this, I'm going to go here and start. And i got to turn my volume on. Oh, usually it'll make a clicking noise. I screwed up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back. Okay. I, it's not clicking because it's in the I can hear it clicking. You can hear it clicking? Good. But when I was out there, I could only tell when to pause by the clicking. In other words, I listened as I was going click, 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 because it's a series of photos. And you look at this. It stitches them all together, okay? And look how seamless that is. Now, if so, now the computer's not too good because it's up in front. When you're doing a panorama, try if it's a close room like this, try rotate the camera around or the phone around the camera. If you're out there, you can do like this, but the closer you do it, because what happens is I'm changing the angle of attack. This was so close, it showed up ghosted. But what's really cool is I can upload this to my camera roll, or I can upload it to occipital site for free. View my panorama, open in Safari. I don't know if it works on this. We'll try. Ah, so in I can send this website to anybody, and they have this great 360 viewer built into the app. Occipital. Buck 99. They don't need the app to display it. How does that work? No, that's in Safari. So when you upload it to Occipital's site, 
you can keep your photos there. Let me see if I can go into my other photos because I'll, I'll show you some real world examples about this. Oh, and look at this. It shows that, yeah, you just share the link. So let me see if I can get into my other ones. Ah, so. One sec. One, it's the company that makes Pano. So. So. I have some other ones here I took. Oh, here was at the Monterey Historics uh, car show. I'm taking a 360 degree panorama. These are all mine that are stored in Occipital for free. You're doing these. With I use the app, Pano 360. Oh, look at on, that. On, on an iPhone. Yeah. Cool. Uh, on a iPhone or iPad. <coughs> oh, iPad too. Yes. Okay. So the only way you get to Occipital. Yeah, and they provide this space free for you because it has this viewer. And I want to show an example here. Uh, we go to the crab feed every year. I don't know if this is it. Oh, gosh, no, that's a job I just did. So do you recommend using iPads? Or iPhone is always the preferred. Oh, here we go. Here is my trip to Alaska. I'm standing out on the boat near the glaciers. Oh, that's the wrong one. But anyway, I'm sitting on the boat, and they just did a panorama right off the boat. Skagway. That is Skagway, I think. <laughs> so 360 Pano, it's called. I think if you're going to be out there taking shots and stuff, there's many times where a panorama is very, very, very nice. Uh, the last one's trying to load. All right. When you take photos, no matter where you take photos, you're going to want to back them up. Is there anybody here that's not using a time machine backup for their Mac? If you're not, please see me. It's really easy to do. Get out of that. But what I want to show you is I keep my photos on Flickr. So here's this purse photo we took earlier. I can take, as long as I have a Flickr account, it's free, with Flickr, F-L-I-C-K-R, and it's part of Yahoo. It's the only part about Yahoo I like. I can share, whether it be from my Mac, from my iPad, from my iPhone, I have one terabyte of free storage. Actually, I pay for pro storage, but you get one terabyte of free storage, and I can take this photo and upload it. Oops, I got to get out of that. Come on, catch up with me. I'll try to get this internet correct. Don't let me forget to pause the. Come on. Anyway, trust me. Actually, I'll show you on the. From the iPhone and from the iPad and from your Mac, you can upload directly to Facebook, to Flickr, to Twitter from within the app. Unfortunately, it's not cooperating right now. So one sec. Yeah, I'll show you how the upload works. We're going to take our little break right now. Let's try to do about 10 minutes. And I'm here if you have any questions. And I'll try to get this internet thing squared away. Hope nobody's downloading anything. There's that. All right. We should be back in business. Hey, Sean. This is what it superposes on any picture that you have. So it's like the reality. Uh, yeah, obviously it gives you a, 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 a latitude, longitude, 
your e elevation. And it's just reading your back. Right? And when you and when you when you take the picture, it superimposes that on it on, on the, the photo. On the photo. So if you and your camera roll and your camera, roll. but then it's strippable. Uh, no, well, I mean if if you need something just to kind of chronicle the location of a photo shoot or something, uh, you know, I in gotcha. that context, I gotcha. that's a good. That's like uh, like I say, it'll give you your your orientation. Right. You, know, you know, so you know exactly where you are looking. Yeah. When you took the photo. That's, it seems that's like great. You need that speedometer if you're going. If you're trying. <laughs> <laughs> Document your speed. No officer is really. Well, um, what was that app that you talked about this morning? Where you put the sun? Oh yes, yeah, TPE. TPE. It's called the Photographer's Ephemeris. Okay. You know, there's. Uh, there's actually a website, and they, they sell a version of it for Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. It's a desktop well, my, version. My, my daughter-in-law is a real sweet I can. She, you know, hey, how are you? Money, she can go right yeah. click her anywhere and I'll log in. I have that already. Good. I was last time when I came and saw you. For her oh, right, good. Yeah. Hawaii, and Flickr's the, great. Yeah, uh, I can, I, I'm not able to open it to drop on the morning on my computer or your cast, so yeah, It's the internet's kind of bad. That's, I can do it on the internet's kind of bad. Laptop there. I sure right, yeah. Can. Okay. That's the problem. Sure. Yeah. So I'll be able to learn some stuff without it logging on. Yes. Right, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to cover after the break. I'm pretty yeah, much good. done with travel. Good, yeah. I'm sorry? It's always in camera roll if you take a picture. So certain photos? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can show it here. The problem is... See, I don't think it's going to let me here. Hang on. Yeah, it's not going to. I'm going to have to do a screenshot. Yeah. 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 No, I, I wrote it this morning actually, and uh, I'm sure. I told her, oh, she might change that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't yeah. care about square meters. You might No, not at all. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's totally fine. Just, it just matters because otherwise it's like the slightest. Yeah, and then when I when you get yeah. it, you can yeah. deposit it. Because square deposits are really quick. Yeah. Unlike yeah. Google, that took yeah. used to take almost four days. I didn't look into that yeah. other part for you because that'd be nice for going forward. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it just links them to a website and you pay. It does this a lot. Yeah. Which it will be helpful here. And it's weird because, okay, so I don't think everybody's good. And I had I, I never got an email. That's not you. What are you saying? I never got an email about that. And I said, I said, I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said that you got a response. Uh -uh. I saw the lady's response. I went, oh, the class is where? And that's the first I got about the class. See, that's weird, though, because so I know something. Shirley said that she don't get one and somebody else. So I cleaned uh, out Bob my... Bob didn't get one? It's weird. And how are many you So here's the thing. I actually signed it into Gmail online. Uh, uh, and I did, I blind copied my, my whole contact, which was like 200 and something contacts. Sure, you don't have to do that. But it's hard to get away and not get your contacts over you. Well, that's what I did. That's what I did. So I, I created an Empower Mac. Because when I was doing it through, you know, Mac now, I could only do like 30 at a time or 40 at a time, whatever it was. It would cap out. You should never do more than 50. Really? Yeah, because they keep worse than everything. That's probably where it's going. How many do you send? It's like 280 people. You know what you should do is get MailChimp. MailChimp's free. MailChimp? Yeah, um, okay. MailChimp is free. Up to 499 people. Okay. And it manages the subscriptions. Oh, okay. And people have the option to say, I don't want to subscribe. They can think because of the spam walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the option of not subscribe. No. Oh, okay. But, well, yeah, because people will email and say, take me off your mailing list, and I yeah, delete them. Yeah, out of but the this contacts. way, the nice thing is they click unsubscribe, and it, you don't have to do it. But it also says if one didn't get delivered. And kind of oh, okay. So uh, I, you said it's MailChimp. MailChimp. Chimp, uh, like a monkey. Okay. All right, I'll uh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, and maybe or maybe have Pete look into it and see if yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going around. Cause yeah, because oh, we had a speaker at Magnexus yeah. talk about it. And it seems to be the way to go. And again, free up to four ninety nine. Their business model is, hey, we hope some people. We hope you go to five hundred one so you have to start paying. You know. Right, right, right. Yeah, we won't have to do that for no. a while because we've been we've been holding steady at like between two seventy five and three hundred. Oh, yeah, but I didn't. I haven't. That's so weird. Even the even the subsequent ones I sent out. Because I said, and I have a couple email addresses listed. Yeah, because I said, I think I sent out four emails. Yeah, and I think Bob said he didn't get it, and I think somebody else. That's so weird. Because then after you told me, they sent me that email that said that Bob and Shirley yeah, didn't get it, I resent so it. No, we're in here. Okay, here's that one. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's March now. I got this. No, nope, that's old. That's the. Everything else was in grief. See, and that's the only reason I knew about it is because the person, and I say, what are they, hovering on the website all the time? See, does your, your Canada Power Max still works? Yeah, oh my, kind of forward to one place. Huh. Let's see if they went into my spam. Oh, I don't have. The junk? No, junk is different than spam. Oh, okay. Spam would be direct online, so let's go into. Ah. Hmm. Uh, Huh, interesting. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll break it down to, and we'll look into MailChimp and then. And see, because it might even make it easier. Yeah, because if that makes it easier for me, that's perfect. Let's look, for, let's look at my spam folder. When was it? Oh, uh, I think Wednesday. Wait. Uh, you sent another one? Yeah, I sent, I sent like four out. Let's look under Lisa. No, nope. I'm going to release a shut my eyes. No, it's like an inbox. I think that one forwards to this. Nothing, huh? Huh. But let's. That's weird. Yeah, because I think I just sent one out on Wednesday, my last one.
Last notes. Address clarification. Yeah, that was it. Twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I got that. Okay, but you didn't get the one. That was May twenty-two. Yeah, but you didn't get one after May twenty-two. Five twenty-one. No. Okay. I so got, you didn't get I the first an one. Class notes. Okay, but you didn't get the one that I just sent this week. Okay, so you know what I'll do? I'll look into MailChimp, and if that doesn't work, I'll... How many do you think you were sending at the time? I'd still keep it at 50 if I were you. Okay, even Because that's what I recommend, because they, okay. they, it's it's not just you. It's like if Comcast sees a bunch, they think that it is. It's kind yeah. of... Okay. It's, I mean, I see the point, but it's like... Yeah. All right, well, it's fine. <sighs> keep it at 50. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Have a good drive. Oh, thank you. Remember, which way do you go home? I'm gonna go. Well, I take five eighty. Good. Or eighty to five eighty. Good. Well, wow, they're gonna be big traffic problems. Well, okay. for you, yes. You should go the north end. Go eighty to five. No, the big traffic is up, up 50 downtown. Okay. You know where the fixed 50 right, right, thing is? Yeah, that's you're not going by that. No, I'm going to 80. Right. 80. Yeah, you'll go 80 to Woodland. You'll be fine. Right. You'll just have the typical Sunday traffic.